Hey guys, here we are with Southern Assault Game 2. This is Orcs and Goblins vs. Vampire Counts. This will be a meeting engagement. The only special rule for this is you can always place your general. Even if you um, choose to have a unit and the unit fails, you can still put him on the board. He just can't be in a unit then. And let's take another quick look through my list. Since I'm playing Vampire Counts, I need to worry about Ethereals. I do have two magic weapons, with Fences Blades and Biting Blade. And I can always have Fist of Gork as a magical weapon is also. Now look at my Vampire Counts opponents list. He's comp to 13 which means he's four points higher than me. I thought we were supposed to be living two points of each other but I think they were just having a lot of problems trying to match people up so he's playing somebody he, he probably shouldn't have played being 13 he should have played somebody between 11 and 15 and not somebody as low as me. But his list is going to give me a lot of problems here because he doesn't have the standard things you used to see in a vampire list. He doesn't have the big you know, night bus, which you're used to, or any terror guys. But instead what he has, he has things that's going to make it hard for me, my war machines to really do anything. Because with his um, blood knights and his vampires in there, when they have that flag of the blood keep that gives them that 4 plus ward against any range attacks, that's going to make it very difficult for my war machines. And now I'd like to note that my opponent came from the Cobra Kai Club. And we did have Daniel Sun and Furbush from Miyagi Do Karate, but he's not helping me in this game. I really wish he was. <laughs> and now look at my deployment. Um, since I won the roll for table sides, I had to deploy my entire army first, and that's like a really and that's a big disadvantage anyway, but when you have to worry about ethereals, that makes it worse because now he'll know exactly where to you know, put his hex race to avoid my magical weapons because this is open list. And also when I was rolling for my deployments, both my wolf riders and my orc archers were all rolled for reserves. He had his one zombie unit rolled for reserves. Let me make a quick correction. He had two dog units and a zombie unit in reserve, not just his zombies. And this is look at his deployment. And as you can see, he does have his hex race right there avoiding all my magical attacks. I'm kind of hoping I can get my Ragnarok away from them. And he has his big blood knights. He's along the table edge, which gives me more time to shoot at him, but just the fact that he's got that 4 plus ward is going to make it very difficult. And you can't see here, but on the other side of this building at the bottom, he's got his unit of Vargeist. And this is the Organ Garden turn 1. Um, when my units come onto the board, I put one Wolf Rider unit on the right on the other side of this little Vista Gork statue and my other wolf riders and my orc archers are on the left. When we go into magic, I'm able to get Fist of Gork on my Shaman. And then I try to boost a Foot of Gork onto his Hex Wraiths. I, I really want to try to get rid of them, but he dispels it. When we go into shooting, I'm, I'm pretty frustrated shooting at his Blood Knights. I think one checker does kill one of them. And one of my Doom Drivers scatters onto the bats. And I decide not even try to scatter back. I just set up, you know, I'll just try to hurt the bats. And I do four wounds to them. But that's about all that happens. And this is just an overhead shot of my um, unit after the first, my army after the first turn. You'll notice I have my level 1 orcs with the trolls there. And that's basically because I wanted him to be in range with, for some things with Photogork. If I'd had him back behind them, he would have been in range. Now, Vampire's turn 1, as you can see, it's a really big turn here. Um, he charges his Vargas to my goblins. And I decided to hold here because I figure if I have four goblins left alive, I'll be able to be steadfast. I mean, at least five goblins left alive, I'll be steadfast. And they'll be there so that my mangler can go to the Vargeist. I think he forgets that skirmishers don't get ranks, so I think he thought he would be able to break my steadfast if he, you know, killed nine goblins or six goblins or whatever. Um, so then he also um, moves one wolf unit, you know, to try to redirect my rack and rock, and then his other units come on. He got zombies coming off there and his two wolf units. One's on the far right. When we go into magic, I need to stop his more important spells, so I have to let a gaze go through. It doesn't really do any damage, but it, it, it accomplishes the main deal, which is to bring back the blood knight that my Chuck had killed, so my, my one little shooting victory was nullified. Um, when we go into combat, you know, as expected, his Vargas really tearing at my goblins, but I have 11 left. Which means I'm steadfast. I mean, I would have been steadfast as long as I had five left. He thought since he had a rank, he thought he had a rank with all his Vargas there. But when you realize that skirmishers don't get ranks, 
that lets me stay, stay steadfast. I'm in general in BSB range, so I'm able to hang around. And this is Orc and Goblin turn two. I charge some wolves on the right that you can't see in this picture at some wolves that he has. And also um, decide not to charge my Arachnorok at the wolves there because I knew that he was going to be able to get a flank on me with his hex race. And I guess, you know, even if I had reformed, and I'm not sure how much I could have reformed, he would have got me in the front. And at this point, I didn't really want my Ragnarok to be tied up against those hex rays. Other than that, my Mangler does go through his Vargeist. I kill three of them, and I think I carry one or two wounds over to the remaining Vargeist. So I do really, really good there. Um... Other than that, I really have no other moves. Going to magic, I really get nothing off. I think I get, um, I think I get a foot off and it scatters and it does nothing. Going into shooting again, I really do nothing to him. Uh, I think at one point I get so frustrated I shoot a doom diver at his wolves that were in front of the Ragnarok and I killed, I killed, I couldn't even wipe them out. I killed four of them. Not going into combat. You know, if, of course, this time he does wipe up my goblins. They break. He runs them down, and he runs into my little bitty troll bus here. My wolf riders are charging his wolves do really badly. I think I kill one wolf, and he kills two of me. So we have a two-two tie over here. Going to vampires turn two, and you can see this is another big turn. He wants to charge his hex race to my Ragnarok, but he can't clear the building with his ethereal, so he's not able to do that. Instead, he charges them at my trolls, and, and then I realize, you know, I really wish I hadn't moved my Ragnarok back. I wish he could have charged my Ragnarok and not my trolls. He also charges his last <laughs> wolf that I couldn't stop at a spear checker that's on the hill. And then he just moves up some other units. When we go into magic, he gets dance off on his hex race. I'm not able to stop it. So my trolls are really in trouble now. When we go into combat, his wolves on the far right, which you can't see in the picture, beat my wolf riders and run them down. His hex rays really beat up. I didn't even realize they had flaming attacks. So he, he really he really beats up my trolls and wipes them out. And then the only good thing I guess is that my little troll bus, you know, the little troll chariot here, wipes out one his Vargeist. He only does two wounds to me. I'm able to pass my break test so I'm able to hold those Vargeist up. Also noticing that pick looming at the bottom right, I have my Ragnarok, where he can either now charge the flank of the Hex race, or maybe try to make a charge at the Vargo. What will I do? And Orc and Goblin turn three. And this is another big turn, turn here. I um, charge my Ragnarok at the flank of those Hex rays. I probably could have made that Vargo, but I figured I wouldn't have killed it. And then he would have just I was thinking he would probably just charge his Blood Knights into it and then kill my Rock Rock easily. And I thought, you know, I'm going into the flank, I'll have a charge. He's only going to have two Hex Wraith attacks, two Wolf, two, not Wolf, two um, Mount attacks. I should win this. I should at least win by one, you know, take out one, hold his Hex Wraith off the wall. So then I charge my Orc Heirs into the flank of his Vargeist. I charge my Gigantic Spider into his Zombies. I forgot to mention that they had landed on the mangler that was there. I only killed six or seven of them, but I know now if I put my giant spotter the way I position him, he won't be to charge his ghouls in there to the zombies and help them, and I'll hold, hold that ghoul unit off for a very long time. And also, my little night goblin unit had failed at a monster, and they were forced to charge the bats in front of them, and I didn't really like that so much because I was hoping I could just keep my Night Goblins there and hold those Blood Knights off longer, but, you know, what are you going to do? And then finally my last Mangler goes through those wolves on the right that destroyed my Wolf Rider, so I got a little bit of revenge there. And going to Magic, I still do nothing. I mean, Photogork is gone. I, I don't have Hand of Gork, <laughs> so I really have not much to do. Going to Shooting, um... That one little direwolf here on the hill destroyed my spear check in combat before, and I forgot about that. That's another thing that was irritating. I had three goblins, he had one wolf. I knew I'd have at least two goblins left alive. I was hoping they could do one wound to kill that guy. They couldn't do it. So I lost that spear check up. 
So these are the links I'm going to go to now to try to kill that one dire wolf. I shoot both my remaining spare chuckers at it. Both miss. I shoot a doom diver at it. It misfires and destroys itself. Other doom divers too close to shoot at it. I don't think it even does anything. I don't even know what I shoot it at. So I, I can't get rid of that wolf. <laughs> Going into combat, of course, here's what happens. You know, I can't attack the hex race. He has four attacks. He does three wounds. I lose. Before that happened, I because I charged my biggins into the little wolf unit in front of them. I planned on after I beat that to reform and have my general closer to Mark Rock Rock and not just to BSB. I forgot to do that. So only have a reroll on a six. And not a nine with a reroll. So my Rock Rock breaks, gets run down. <laughs> uh. So then um only all the good things, you know, I wiped out the little wolf unit. I'd done that already. My um archers going in with the Vargeist and my trolls. I'm able to wipe the Vargeist out. My gigantic spider goes in and he does several wounds. I don't take any wounds back. And I'm glad I don't really wipe his zombies out then because I'm trying to hold those um, ghouls off, which I'm able to do. And the turn just ends with my night goblins wiping out his bats, which is like a you know, a, a small consolation for the, the bad things that happen in this turn. And here we have Vampire's turn three. He charges his Blood Knights into my Night Goblins. I hold. I'm just trying to hold him off as long as possible. He charges his single wolf at my Doom Diver. We go into magic. He gets Dance off. I have to let him. I um, mean, I really don't want to use my War Dice or my staff right now to try to stop it. I'm hoping I can try to stop it later. When we go into combat, my gigantic spider is able to get his zombie unit down to just like one zombie. Which is kind of bad because I wanted to kill it now so in my turn I can move it away from the gold. You know, what are you going to do? He wipes out my night goblins and overruns into my biggins. And then his um, wolf that goes into my um, doom diver, this time it doesn't do any, any damage to it. I'm not able to kill it either but I'm able to pass my panic test or my break test and I don't just automatically get destroyed so you know that's one little thing my doom driver holds out I still just can't kill that wolf though I don't I don't know what's going on and we have orc and goblin turn four um, I charge my little troll chariot at his Vargolf I'm hoping I can hold that Vargolf off and that's pretty much all my moves I don't have much else left um, going into magic I'm able to get Fist to Gork off on my great shaman but I can't get air we go off. So we go into um, shooting. Uh, I only have one spirit checker left other than um, the doomed. I don't have two spirit checkers and the, there's really nothing they can do. I think I shoot at goals. I don't think I do anything. Um, so we finally go into combat. I'm able to kill that last wolf that's fighting my doom diver. <laughs> so I'm finally able to get that 30 point unit off the table. My gigantic spider takes the last zombie out, but now I'm going to be charged by the ghouls. And when we go into the other combats um, that really matter, my troll chariot gets a tie against a Vargolf. He kills one troll. That troll had two wounds on it already. So I get a charge, and he gets a wound, so it evens out. Um, going into the big combat, he kills my BSB, and he, you, can, you can see in this picture, he really wipes up my Biggin unit. But my guy's coming back because of um, Fist of Gork. You can tell I take him all the way down to where he just has his banner guy, his BSB, and his general left in that unit. So if I can kill that banner guy next turn, at least I'll get the points for the Blood Knights. So I can try to salvage something out of this. And if somehow I can hold, you know, maybe I can you know, get close to a draw, if not a draw. And we go into Vampire Counts turn 4. We realize now we only have around 20 or so minutes left. We're going to have to end the game after this turn. So whatever happens now is going to be the end of the game. He charges his ghouls into my gigantic spider. I probably should have held, but I fled just hoping to get away. I probably should have held and then hoped he didn't kill me and then hoped that I would get away with fleeing. 
but you know, Jagged Egg Spiders don't have Swiss stride, so it would have been like an even roll for the flea if I hadn't get, didn't get destroyed in combat. But I do flee, I don't get away, he runs me down. So when we go into magic, <laughs> this is this is crazy. He's trying to get dance off. He's trying to get something off to heal a, a knight back, one or two knights back, to try to keep me from wiping his blood knights out. I um do everything I can to try to stop these things. He he wants to get dance off. I um roll my dice to dispel it. I fail. I realize you know if I use my war dice, all I gotta do is change one roll and make a four or more. I just spell his, his um, roll. I rolled a two originally. So I roll my roll dice. What happens? I roll a one on my war dice. So I go from a two to one. And I was like, well, I still have my staff. Now I just need to roll a four more on my staff. <laughs> and I'll get rid of this dance. And he won't be able to heal his knight back. What do I do? I roll another one. <laughs> God. So he gets, a, he gets his knight back. And now I don't have my level four anymore. So he's able to get another knight back. So now he has three knights. And his two characters, I'm not gonna be able to kill three knights, I don't think. He also dispels my fist of gork. So, you know, I am not gonna get those points now. When we go into combat, um the troll and the Vargai Vargolf, it's another draw, we can't hurt each other. When we go go into this combat here, I'll be able to kill one blood knight. He kills a bunch more orcs, I'm steadfast, I'm able to pass it on my nine, and that ends the game. So when we add it all up, it's thirteen seven in favor of vampire counts. I just, I, I, if I guess if I could have got those blood knights, I could have maybe you know, maybe got eleven nine instead of a thirteen seven. That would have helped out a lot. But um, you know, all in all, I'd, as bad as I was playing, a thirteen seven went as bad as it as it could have been. So I'd like to thank you guys again for watching another battle report. Um, I'll try to have game three up in the next, maybe the next two or three days. I'll be playing Lizardman, and I'll be playing the local club guy. Well, he's technically in another club, but when other people in his club don't show up for a tournament or not able to come to a tournament, he'll join our club like a, temporarily. I think I think that's what I was explaining to me. So for this tournament, he's in our club. I guess usually he's not. But I'll see you guys then, and thanks for listening. Feel free to subscribe and like and make comments or suggestions. I'll see you guys next time.